Hello there, Ray here, and we have the second snapshot for the 1.15 versions of Minecraft Java. This one comes up with a lot of different changes, many of which actually are pretty technical as we have some discontinued items getting removed from the game, as well as some new discontinued items being introduced. And we also have some indestructible block breaking methods also being removed from the game, and with many many more changes. Now they came out with a statement with this snapshot saying that they're going to go ahead and try to slow down the amount of stuff coming out per snapshot in order to really try to fix bugs as they come up in the snapshots. So a lot of these bug fixes are going to be about the new things that they introduced with 1.15. It's also going to give a little insight into some new stuff that they're going to introduce with 1.15. A lot of times when they're introducing new things in one part of the code, they see some problems also with that, which have to do with old stuff in the Minecraft. But they go ahead and fix it. So you can see a lot of changes to do with Enderman in the snapshot, which gives us insight that the future versions are going to be something related to that or teleportation. But this is actually a good thing since they had a massive problem with past versions like 1.13 and 1.14 where they would try to push out versions that had a lot of bugs with them. And this really discouraged people from starting up servers or even playing these full releases of a game because they had so many bugs still in them. So I'm really glad that they're taking this approach. This also allows me to spend more time in each snapshot inventing new farms and designing stuff. Which every Wednesday and Friday we do have a special stream where you the viewers guys can join our snapshot testing server and build stuff with us. So I'll see all you guys there and you can learn about that down in the description. Let's get into all the changes to do with the new 1.15 snapshot which is 19w35a. In the new snapshot they made some small changes to bees so now bees will try to avoid water. I did see a couple bees getting stuck like in water on that seagrass, kind of like you see other mobs do, but bees did not ever chase me into the water as you've seen in my last video. Now they probably also avoid like flowing water. Now they also made changes to the bee nests themselves, that's these naturally generating hives here. And they made them more rare. I actually did find this one, same one I found in the last world. This is found inside of a flower forest. They also change it so that the bee nests will not spawn unless there is air in front of the front side of the beehive. So if there would generate a block like right here, then this beehive would not spawn into the world. That way the bees can actually leave out the front door here. Now you guys did mention in my last bee farm that I ship at the door to a side where they can get out. The problem is the nest was actually completely shrouded on size and the bees were actually getting in and out from the bottom. But ideally you would want to have the door facing an area where they can get out. And they also made a change to villagers. Now when villagers will go ahead and sleep in a bed at night, the player can actually kick them out. So if this villager goes into bed, he's going to occupy it. So it says it's occupied and then now the player can actually right click it. That's going to kick them out and then you can hop into it if you want to. I think it's a really cool change if people have like their house near the villagers and they want to go ahead and use that bed to sleep away the night. You don't have to try to destroy the bed and then move it away from the villagers. They fixed a really long time bug and is labeled as Minecraft bug 849. This is where you would have two foods in your inventory and you eat the first one and after eating the first one the second one would also be devoured without any animation. And some people thought this was a normal mechanic that was in the game, but it did cause unintentional things like people accidentally eating two golden apples since they were stacked together. They also fixed some other problems to do with eating, where when you eat the honey bottle and then you would switch to a different inventory, it would actually create the empty bottle over top of a different item. This was causing that item to be deleted. There was also a similar bug that was actually causing items that could be consumed to be duplicated this way. Now with the new food added into Minecraft, the honey bottle, which is in the foodstuffs category, is now also need to be consumed in order to get the advancement, a balanced diet. We have to eat everything that is edible, even if it's not good for you. So now there is a total of 39 different things you have to eat in order to get this advancement. They fix a few bugs to do with hardcore worlds, where clicking on the hardcore status when starting a new world wasn't always working. And also that the hardcore world wasn't getting deleted after you have died in it. They also fix some stuff to do with when the player dies in the death screen. As you can see, it looks a little bit different as the chunks in the background aren't unloading and the screen is also not shaking. Now, as many of you guys know, at the end of my videos, I do a little funny way of saying goodbye. And for quite a few versions already, this bug has been present and has made some funny outros. If you guys want to see, you can check the outros of a lot of my videos. Now, after killing the Ender Dragon, you're given these entrance end portals. And one of the things that they have changed is that they now made it so that you cannot use water to destroy these portals. 
Now, as many of you guys know, I do use these portals for quite a few different things, like making infinite amounts of bedrock, there's also wither cages, and we're using these to get to the world border of the end dimension on the Protec SMP server. What you used to be able to do is grab some water, and then you just need to place it up against something that is slightly smaller than a full block. And that cannot also be waterlogged. So something like a gate would have worked and you do something like this and then you would click up against this and then they place the water over here. So I can kind of show you an illustration of how this would work. You click over here and the water gets placed over here. But now the minute, as you can see, when I click up against this, water does not get placed over here and it does not destroy this portal here. So stuff like my four block tree farm used this as well as my wither rose farm. As you first destroy this portal and then you put a wither inside of here and the wither is contained inside of these bedrocks. But now that you cannot easily destroy the portal with water, it makes it a little bit harder, but it's still not impossible as you can use other methods to break the portal, similar to breaking bedrock in survival. Now, if you guys are curious about how you can do that, I will put a playlist down in the description, which shows the ways you can still break them even now. They also remove the ability to use like lava or even a dispenser with liquids inside of it. So you put a button on that and it tries to dispense it ends up just dropping it into this portal here instead of breaking the portal. Now it's really unfortunate that they would remove this mechanic from the game and it's not something people would accidentally do and cause them to destroy their portal. It only occurred from those people that kind of understood what they're doing and were trying purposely to destroy it. And I have discussed this before in the past with some Mojira moderators. And at the time, I really didn't feel like it was something that needed to be fixed. Now, this also applies to other gateway portals as well as end portals. So here's the exit end portal. And you used to be able to click right here and destroy this block here. But you can no longer do that. Now, you can still use liquids to destroy another portal. So if I click right here, you can go ahead and remove it. Now they also fix a couple different bugs to do with Endermen. So like when Endermen fall and land in water, they would teleport away and then die. Now they fix it so the Endermen, if it falls and hits the ground, it will die, even if it's inside of water. They fix it so the Endermen will no longer make the staring sound when they just have been provoked by attack. They fix a bug to do with Endermen when you punch them. They sometimes look like they would vanish and then reappear in front of you. Like they have teleported away and they came back very quickly. They also fix it so Endermen will no longer teleport to waterlogged blocks. And they fix Enderman staring sound doesn't play if the Enderman was spawned in less than 20 seconds ago. They also fix it so that Endermen who teleport away from projectiles won't teleport into water. There was a bug to do with banners not waving in the wind during certain time periods. And they have fixed this. They fix a bug to do with the armor indicator near the hotbar not appearing sometimes when you twitch dimensions until a short period afterwards. They fix a pretty old bug to do with when arrows were shot in the game and then you would unload these like by logging out and logging back in. The arrows would have little particles coming out of them. This could be player arrows or it could be mob arrows and they went ahead and fixed that. Now if you guys remember there was a discontinued block that you could get in the game which was a pumpkin that was enchanted. And you get this by making the pumpkins before they changed them in 1.13. They went ahead and fixed this. So let's see how exactly how it's going to work. So if we put one carved pumpkin in there, we can go ahead and produce an enchanted carved pumpkin. So now you once again can do those tricks where you put cursive binding onto a pumpkin and put it onto some person's head by using a dispenser. Let's see if it works with like mending or anything else. Mending don't work. Unbreaking doesn't work. Okay, so it's only the negative enchantments and it doesn't seem to work with a normal pumpkin Oh, it does work with a jack-o'-lantern so you can get enchanted jack-o'-lanterns as well now Though you can't stick jack-o'-lanterns on your head and they can't be placed like an armor stands either If you place it down as a block It's just going to convert over to a normal block and if you break it, it's no longer going to have that enchantment on it But Something like an enchanted pumpkin this one's a carved pumpkin You can go ahead and put on an armor stand and it'll show up being enchanted so now there's a new different type of discontinued. This is no longer discontinued, but having an enchanted pumpkin is now a discontinued item if you have collect these prior to this change. So if you do have your world in 1.14 and you're going to upgrade, be sure to go ahead and grab some enchanted pumpkins. Because once you get to 1.15, they will be a discontinued item. Now all villagers have this little pouch here that shows what level they are as their profession. And nitwits also have this, even though they don't have anything to sell and they can't increase it. So they went ahead and removed that. They fixed the Ravager's AI when it would get close to a pillager patrol. So now it won't be so broken. They now added bees in order to get the advancement two by two, which is the advancement we have to breed 15 different types of mob in order to get it. 
There was a bug to do with bees trying to harvest pollen from the bottom piece of two high flowers and I went ahead and fixed this. It fixed a minor bug to do with bees sitting on the ground were actually floating one pixel above it. it. fixed kind of a quirky bug to do with when trees were actually growing up and you grow a tree, there was a chance that a nest would automatically be part of it. It also fixed a bug to do with the bee's image not being centered with its hitbox. They changed it so that the beehives are now going to be flammable, so if you put fire near them, or if they catch on fire, they should burn up. I will put a nest beside this as well and see if that burns. There it goes. It went ahead and burned up the hive. And there it went and burned up the nest as well, so they're both flammable. If you guys did enjoy this snapshot review video, be sure to go ahead and share it with a like as well as share it with someone else so they can keep up to date about 1.15 bees. Like I said, they did mention that they're going to go kind of slow and try to fix all the problems that they come across as they find them in the game. That way, by the time we get done with 1.15, they'll go ahead and have a nice clean release without having so many problems after the release. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, be sure to go ahead and do that. And as always, this Wednesday and Friday, we do snapshot review testing streams where we open up the server for the viewers can hop on with us as we test out the new snapshots. And you can find more information on my schedule, which is linked on my Twitch channel. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.